During our 19-day stay in Timor Leste, the GoFa team travelled around the country to cover an array of stories. In the following piece, the team shares some of their experiences. Lying on the northern coast, the capital of Timor-Leste, Dili, is home to approximately 150,000 inhabitants. It is the largest city in the country, being both the political and commercial centres of Timor-Leste. While travel guides recommend heading out east for some of the best ocean views, Dili has its fair share of scenic spots as well. Dili has great beaches. Uh. There's a section of beach at the back called the $1 beach which is not really visited by many people, especially during the weekdays. Basically, the beaches there are very pristine, they are unspoiled. Story is basically this Catholic monument, it's this very big Jesus Christ statue. From there, right, you can get a very, very nice view of the entire Dili. And in Dili, there's this place called the Thai's Market. When you first set foot there, right, it's um, very colourful and for me, my personal experience is that it, it really brightens up my day. I think Bangkok is the second largest city in the whole Timor Leste. Bangkok has got great Portuguese architecture. The columns, the pillars are actually a reminiscence of the art that was famous during the Renaissance period of Europe. It's one and only um, suitable hotel to stay in. The Posada, it's actually an old Portuguese colonial bungalow. The overall structure of it gives it a pretty good description of how the Portuguese colonial masters live in Timor-Leste. Los Palos, it's a seven-hour drive away from the capital. The sky is gorgeous. The blue is unlike any other blue. People at the market were very friendly. Like, you can approach anyone in Los Palos and they will be willing to help you. Sua is in the south coast of uh, Timor-Leste. Some of the houses we went to, the backyards were supposedly spewing oil like during the wet season. There was this Portuguese era oil pump that a villager opened for us and it started like spewing basically oil like, just bursting out of the pipes which was an eye opener for me. Uh, Ailu is a small town just next to Dili. It's about an hour and a half drive up there. The people in Ailu are mostly farmers. They are like this vast farmland. So when we, like let's say one of my um, group mates, she, has to, she had to talk to a farmer. We had to drive through like a huge um, farmland just to get to that particular house. Um, Malbisi itself was uh, a very um, cooling. It was a nice change away from Dili because when we were in Dili, it was very, very hot. And then Mabisi is in the hills, there are lots of uh, clouds. The sun was peeking through the clouds, so its rays were like shining onto the church. So it was like a oh, hallelujah moment, you know. Lalako is at the fringes of Amera. Amera is like the highest coffee producing region. So you get a lot of coffee plantations over there. In the coffee plantations, right, it's really just anywhere. Like, then you see those red cherries when, when it's in the season. Um, they get their kids to pluck the cherries for them. They will use this L-hook branch and hook the branch and then pull it down. And then while one kid is doing this, the other kid will pick the, the coffee cherries. Mount Ramalau is the highest mountain in Timor. If you are somebody who is um, a trekker, Mount Ramalau is definitely the place to go reach the peak just before sunrise to see the sun rising above the clouds and over all the mountains in Timor. The sunrise is really beautiful. 